Welcome to In the Studio on Davis Media Access. I'm your host, Tim Gaffney, and today we have Davis Shakespeare Festival with us, our own professional theater company here in Davis. Founded in 2010 by Gia Batista and Rob Salas, since 2014 they've performed at the Veterans Memorial Theater. Along with innovative productions of Shakespeare, they have mounted a number of gripping historical and contemporary dramas, as well as a set of distinctive dare I say, quirky musicals. Throughout 2020 and 2021, DSF performed a number of productions over Zoom and launched a digital internship program, which brought together actors and production staff from around the country. At the end of this month, DSF will offer its first live production since 2019, a staged reading of Native Gardens by Karen Sakarias. Well, joining us today from Davis Shakes are Madeline Hamaguchi, a staff member with DSF, and Pablo Lopez, who is serving as both director and dramaturge on the production of Native Gardens. Madeline and Pablo, welcome. Thank you so much for having Thank you for us. Having us. You bet. Well, coming <laughs> off of COVID and two years of virtual theater may not have been the most ideal venue uh, for performing and producing, but uh, any bright spots in that period? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, truly, you know, it's a, a silver linings kind of opportunity. Uh, we were able to slow down. It demanded that and we did. We were able to slow down and consider the um, culture around theater and uh, really zero in on the kind of process that we want to be using. Um, and in doing so, we were able to create one of our favorite programs, which was the uh, digital internship program. And um, it we were able to reach students from across the country and in Canada and uh, really uh, create a new foundation for uh, mission statement and values for DSF as a whole. And that was that was really, really helpful. That's great. And, and Pablo, I know that you who you've done a number of productions with DSF on stage, but you were also part of that digital internship program. Uh, what are your thoughts or uh, reflections on that experience? Yeah, a big part of David Shakespeare Festival has always been um, that silver lining and using what you got. And the passion has always been around storytelling. And so to have seen David Shakespeare come alive in this way through the digital internship program, it reminded me of how it felt, you know, the first time David Shakespeare moved to the Veterans Memorial Theater. It was uh, uh, an energy around community joy and, um, and the stories that we tell and that we share together. And um, I think, you know, it's it's so great that that that, that is, is alive through all of these challenges. All of these challenges and all these channels, uh, so to speak. Um, yeah. yeah. Madeline, you, you alluded in uh, your opening comments to uh, sort of think, rethinking the mission of of David Shakespeare. And, and I know that, you know, one of the things that uh, theater companies in general across the country were, were dealing with uh, over the last two years uh, wasn't just COVID, but a number of sort of cultural uh, and social uh, changes and currents moving throughout our society. And you, in fact, you mentioned cultural issues in particular. Can you say something more specific about uh, how Davis Shakespeare has uh, responded to those and how it, it may have incorporated some of those uh, items into its uh, re reformulated mission statement. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's it's been quite a story, quite a journey. Actually, um, we were uh, touched and um, uh, affected greatly by the uh, Black Lives Matter movement that started in 2020, and uh, the, the the theater community around the world as a whole responded, especially in the United States. Um, an organization called We See You White American Theater was started. Um, it was uh, formed by uh, 
Black, Indigenous, people of color, theater practitioners with all different kinds of backgrounds within the industry. And they released a, um, a document, essentially, that would address the scope and the pervasiveness of anti-Blackness and racism in the American theater and uh, things that are much more subtle, um, social justice issues all around. And um, along with that, uh, racial tensions have been kept up as well with the uh, anti-Asian hate movement as well. So we've been on high alert on ways to uh, really take stock and understand about what we wanted to do with our opportunity and our privilege of being able to tell stories and which stories we wanted to tell. So we reflected really openly with one another about how uh, we were complacent in a lot of ways in systemic racism and within the, um, b both within a social justice system as well as within the theater community. So we educated ourselves, learned more about diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility, and incorporated those things into updating our cultural and arts priorities of our organization. And uh, we really identified the core of what we wanted to pursue, which were striving for cultural equity in our work, uh, promoting cultural joy, not necessarily on, all on pain, but cultural joy um, and maintaining spaces, open spaces for others to come into that are reflexive uh, regarding the identities of the people that work on the project and their experiences, uh, inclusive to uh, as many people whose voices may not be heard as much and uh, accessible to as many people both working with us and seeing what we produce. And in doing so, we know that we can't do that all on our own. It has to come from the communities that we want to serve, that we want to stay in touch with. And that's not just Davis anymore. This is gonna be Yolo County. This is Sacramento, this is California. And um, also within communities that are super specific to each staff member that is a part of DSF. And what came out of that was this updated project called Vacancy Arts Collective. And using the slogan, there is room for you. Um, we wanted to, you know, create a space that would practice our updated mission and value statements of diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility, and sustainability for social justice work. Um, cultivating community joy by aligning socially conscious art with equitable practice. And um, this is really going to not necessarily have to take us away from Shakespeare, uh, but it will expand quite a lot the number of projects and the kinds of projects that we can pursue. So, and Native Gardens is uh, one of, is our first, and we're practicing this new system in this new uh, uh, production style and uh, company structure that we created through practicing with DIP and uh, our digital internship program. And uh, we really wanted to enter into the professional sphere with a new, um, a new motivation. So uh, we're really, really excited to yeah. well, carry this on. Thank you. That's, that's, that really gives us some, some important insight on that. I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm glad you uh, provided that segue for us because I would like to hear, and, and I think Pablo has some things to say specifically about this production uh, of Native Gardens uh, under this new sort of uh, uh, heading of the, the, as you said, the Vacancy Art Collective, which is really important. So uh, Pablo, I'd love to hear more about the production uh, specifically of, of Native Gardens and also just uh, you know, if you share with us how this particular uh, choice uh, for a production at this time exemplifies or illustrates um, the 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 principles of Vacancy Arts Collective and the, and the new uh, uh, mission of the of the group. Yeah, yeah. This play was written right before all of these um, sweeping changes in our in our culture in our society. 
um, or the, and it became hugely popular from 2016 to all the way up to 2019. And uh, you, there was uh, at one point, one of the most produced plays in the country because it spoke on the issues that was, that were buzzwords and, and, and uh, it, it spoke on these, these um, controversial political ideas of ownership of this land that we call the United States of America. And it does so in a way that isn't uh, an attack on our culture, on our community. It actually invites us to see ourselves and laugh at ourselves. And, you know, uh, this, this is uh, a, a so important for, uh, for this new initiative of the Vacancy Arts Collective because it perfectly aligns with those, those values of inclusion and diversity and um, accessibility. And, um, and so it invites everybody to the table to, to think about um, uh, what, what it means to, to live as a citizen or as a, a migrant in this country. Um, and it's, it's about two neighbors fighting over a little piece of land that um, may or may not be uh, one, uh, one neighbors. Um, so, well, by law, it's one neighbors, but they, they, they're disputing it. And it becomes a, a metaphor for the border dispute that's happening during the time that Karen was, was writing this play in 2016. There was uh, um, the Trump presidency and the issue of uh, the crisis at the border. Um, and it was a crisis for, for many people. And for some, it was a, a crisis for different reasons than it was a crisis for other people. And this play, uh, frus frustratingly for me as a dramaturg, uh, sits right on the fence of this politi these political divides. And uh, I think this play uh, is, is a, ref honestly, it truly reflects the change that um, that we're going through as a country, but also it, ref it reflects the change that DSF is going through as an organization. Um, structurally and culturally within the organization, we're focused about the people and about including everybody in on the process of storytelling. And, and um, it's huge. It's very different for uh, a theater company to produce a stage reading within six months of time. Um, I was just talking about this with somebody who works at the Fifth Avenue Theater here in Seattle. And, and she was like, yeah, that's very different. Um, and it's there's no hierarchy within the organization that reflects the how it's traditionally done in theaters around the country. So it's it's huge in a lot of different ways that that we're doing this play that um, uh, is is not only about uh, the the political climate, but it's also an, an, a call to environmentalism, and it's specifically a call to um, plant more indigenous plants because this helps the environment wherever you are. And if if half of the lawns in this country, the green grass lawns in this country, were to be uh, regrown as native plants we'd have the biggest national park as a piece of your backyard. So uh, if I think that's, um, th there's a lot of that messaging in there that um, is about the people and about the life of our planet. That's great. That's great. And, and you mentioned uh, the, uh, the, as part of the reorganization of, of David Shakespeare itself, uh, that it's a, a I don't know if you want to call it a flatter organization or a less hierarchical organization. And, and Madeline, I think you alluded to that a little bit. Can you say anything else, more about that and, and how, uh, why that was an yeah. important decision for David Shakes to make? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, a way that we're not trying to uh, retain too rigid in how we create plays 
who we create them for and um, what they're about. Um, so it's, uh, you know, these structures can change and should change. In this case, right now, we're trying a non-hierarchical um, uh, staff structure. And uh, that means that we all have an equal um, say in our meetings and we're working towards creating and making decisions as a group in ways that we think will, um, you know, uh, reach our community the best. And another way that we're trying to sort of create more of a in a perspective sense um if a circle has you know an equal weight all around um it's balanced and everybody can be seen everybody can be heard and there's a space in the center for ideas to grow and um in this case we acknowledge that native gardens is about a specific set of experiences from a specific set of people and um so we tried very hard to create a space for a production team that is uh, an and and acting team directing team that's representing fully the people that are um that the play is about and the play is for so we're uh producing this with um tana in woodland they're uh, an arts organization that's uh part of uc davis that is a printmaking um and uh painting space that focuses on mexican uh latinx and uh and uh, indigenous arts and that's largely uh those are largely the uh, points of reference for Native Gardens culturally. And um, a the directing team, um, the acting team, and the uh, stage management team even are all part of this cultural community as well. And we believe that that makes a difference in um, the way that the story is told. And that's our way Correct. of bringing some balance to the situation. Great, great. So Native Gardens, it's a staged reading uh, being performed on uh, April 30th and May 1st at the Tana Cultural Arts Center in, in Woodland. Uh, patrons can go to the website and get tickets, uh, shakespeardavis.org. I believe we can show that up on the screen mm -hmm. for a moment as well. If viewers want to take note of that, shakespeardavis.org. Uh, As a note, uh, the, these tickets are free. Um, these tickets are free. You just have to make a reservation and also come early for um, a more of a celebration. We're going to have live music, um, some tacos, some aguas frescas, and uh, a talk back after the show. Well, Pablo and Madeline, thank you so much for uh, sharing uh, the vision that David Shakespeare has, uh, telling us more about this specific production. And uh, uh, just really exciting time for Davis Shakespeare. Again, I'm Tim Gaffney. You've been watching In the Studio on Davis Media Access. We've been talking with Madeline Hamaguchi and Pablo Lopez from the Davis Shakespeare Festival. <laughs>